Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Light Packet of another YouTube video. And in today's video, we're going to be doing Let's talk about the amazing Spider-Man franchise or not franchise, but I guess movies here in today's video. So yeah, if you're unfamiliar, pretty much let's talk. So just I pretty much talk about them. It's kind of like a review style thing, but it's not really a review style because I'm doing multiple different movies. But anyways, let's get into this. Uh, so yeah, today's video, I we're doing the Amazing Spider-Man one and two. Just finished watching it, so yeah, might as well do. A let's talk on it. So yeah, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man definitely an interesting movie. Um, I'll do this in order. I'll talk about the Amazing Spider-Man one first, and then I'll talk about the second. So the Amazing Spider-Man does the origin of Spider-Man pretty well. I I must say, I think this does a really Good job. My apologies. It does a really good job of doing the whole Spider-Man origin story, but it is not, it doesn't do the best. I think Tobey Maguire Spider-Man does the best origin story, but it definitely does a good job. I mean, it gets the point across that Uncle Ben uh, dies in it, of course, and just responsibility and him being in high school and stuff like that, uh, getting bit by a spider. It does a decent job of doing that. It does a different kind of take on it. It does a more moderatistic type take on it than, say, the Tobey Maguire did, because it definitely set in two different two different time periods. Uh, with this being released in like 2012, and the other one being released in like the early 2000s, so you kind of understand why that's happening. I mean, yeah. Andrew Garfield, he plays Spider-Man slash Peter Parker very well. I, honestly, I think right now, I think he's my favorite Spider-Man. I think he does, plays the role really well. I think he's just, he plays a while, especially with what he was given, seeing as though these movies didn't do too well and stuff like that. But definitely, he was definitely a pretty good Spider-Man, in my opinion. He does a very good job with Peter Parker as well. Uh, so yeah, the visual effects were done pretty well. Uh, I thought, I thought the visual effects for say Lizard, Spider Man swinging too. That's something else is really, really good as well. My apologies, I keep yawning. Uh, but um, yeah, he does it really, really. Uh, sorry, the visual effects were really done well, especially coming from the Lizard, who's an entirely CGI character. They did it surprisingly well. I mean, the Wizard, the Lizard looked. So so honestly, in terms of good and bad, but I mean, for the visual effects wise, it was pretty good. I really thought it would look really good, realistic, really awesome. I thought it was done really well. Uh, in all honesty, I think that this movie does the best CGI work of all these Spider-Man movies, in my personal opinion. Other than say, Homecoming or Far From Home, because that's kind of set when more money is being given and stuff like that obviously but say the Rami trilogy he does a really well done job of doing it yeah I, th I think that's really good as well the costume I mean the costume was all right I mean I'm not a huge fan and I'm not a huge hate or anything on that but like yeah and it kind of looked a little Strange, it was new. It, I didn't really see much of this suit before ever. I don't even think, I think it was just created for this movie too. But I didn't really like it. I didn't really dislike it. So I'm kind of on the middle of that, to be honest with you guys. I didn't really like it too much. Uh, the villain, the villain wasn't all right. I mean, it was all right. You kind of get why, you kind of get why Kirk Connors is doing this and stuff like that. But maybe, I, in my personal opinion, I think they should have used the secondary villain. I thought it would have been much more better if the they had a secondary villain. And I kind of understand why they didn't. It's because, again, this is acting more as an origin story and stuff like that. So he's not going to master his powers quite yet. But then again, I, I kind of wish that they added just a little bit more of maybe a secondary villain or just upgraded the lizard so much more. 
just in my personal opinion maybe someone was using a lizard that could have been pretty cool as well so that's just something else uh with me as well um the writing was a bit off i I can't even lie the writing was off especially when it came down to uncle ben's killer just for the fact that we see about an hour of the movie goes by and we're watching and we're seeing Peter's hunting down, trying to hunting down this guy who killed Uncle Ben. He's like, where is he? And all that stuff like that. And then still, still by the end of the movie, we still don't even know where he is. They just... My apologies there. He just he just magically disappears. He just doesn't even bother with him, and it just felt like all that time was kind of wasted, honestly. And I didn't really like that at all. So, but that was just my personal opinion. Overall rating for this movie: eight out of ten. It was it was a decent movie. Or actually, I'll give it like a, a seven point five out of ten. Decent movie. Just definitely does some things wrong. All right, let's move on to the Amazing Spider-Man Two. Uh, I thought it was a good follow-up. Uh, I mean, it mentioned stuff from the Amazing Spider-Man stuff like that. Uh, you could see there's kind of a little bit of a time gap in between the two, but uh, I don't think it's more than a month. Maybe I don't. I don't think it's for that long. Uh, I really like the the way it the way it dealt with the events of Captain Stacy's death. I thought just like seeing this all unfold and stuff like that, like. Peter keep getting like kept seeing him and stuff like that but he wasn't really there and stuff like that I thought that was an interesting take as well more realism kind of thing so I thought that was interesting as well and again they forget about Uncle Ben's killer just I don't even know they just completely forget about him they don't mention him again I don't really like that too much the but again Andrew Garfield plays Spider-Man slash Peter Parker very well uh, continue, continually, he just plays a very well character. Really enjoyable. Uh, the costumes were definitely the best part. Best, best, best part of the movie. I mean, look at this costume. It looks awesome, in my personal opinion. One of the best. It's actually, it probably is the best. Uh, and it's comic accurate again. It's really good. I think it's really well done. Fantastic job. Electro was a decent villain, but they barely even gave any backstory. Like, really what they did was pretty much they were like, here, take some, take a loner and be like, that's his motive. He wants the world to be alone. He's alone all the time. They barely gave any backstory exactly what happened. What it would be better, too, is maybe if they made it more tragic. Like, say, oh, his parents died. Oh, his brothers died. Oh, they abandoned him. Whatever. I think that would have been much better for Electro. I don't mind him kind of making this shift to a character because really in the comics too, he's more of just, uh, he's like, I've seen in some of the stuff, he's like a janitor and he gets like electrocuted and stuff like that, but he was never like a loner like this, but this this is a bit different, so I, I, I think I like the new aspect, but again, it has barely any backstory. I didn't really like the Green Goblin. Uh, I thought it was really bad. Didn't enjoy him one bit. I thought he made no sense. Dane the Han, the guy who plays him, I, I think he gave it his all. But he couldn't save the character. I thought it was just, just too bad. I didn't really like it at all. Uh, really, really wasn't enjoyable. I mean, he overacted a bit. Uh, the visual effects, again, they were pretty good. I mean, Electro looked interesting. Uh, I thought the visual effects for him. Web, web shooting was definitely pretty interesting. But again... I don't know if they were using CGI for Green Goblin, but he just looked bad. I can't even lie. He just he, he was terrible. Uh, the story was alright, but again, the writing is bad in this movie. These movies are very poorly written. Didn't really like the writing for any of this. The cinematography was pretty good. I, I really enjoyed it. It really captured the aspects of New York and just all of that, like the scenery and stuff like that. I thought it really was really good and really just enjoyable. Uh, and the death death of Grant Swayze was pretty pretty well done. I mean, I I thought it was pretty good in terms of just acting and everything like that. I thought it was done very well. 
Uh, I felt like the fight scene with Reiner was unfinished at the end, but apparently that could have been tied up in Spider-Man 3, but they never made it, so yeah. Uh, anyways, my overall rating for this movie is going to be an 8 out of 10. I, I liked it a slightly bit more than I liked The Amazing Spider-Man. That's just my, my personal opinion. But overall, uh, for this entire two movies, I would give it maybe a solid 8 out of 10. 7.5. But anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.